Hi, it's Alexis. And Christian from Tiny House Expedition. And we built our tiny house way back in 2014. With the help of friends and family, over nine months of ups and downs and trial and error, it was all worth it in the end. We built a cozy custom home of our own that led us to an adventure of a lifetime. And now we're working on a shuttle bus conversion. In our DIY Tiny Home Build Stories series, we hope to inspire and empower you to take on your own build by yourself or with help. I needed help. I, de <laughs> I definitely needed help. Hi, I'm Sydney and this is my cat Caden and this is our shuttle bus. We are on an alpaca farm in Sandy, Oregon right now. Yeah, when I decided to go smaller than my big bus. It was because I went to Mexico with a big group of people. I'd say there was anywhere from five to seven vans uh, with me at any time. And they all had vans. There was one other short bus, but it was the size of this new bus. And I was the only big bus. And just getting to camp spots. When I was in the big bus, I spent a lot of time in Arizona and Oregon and places where, I don't know, it was pretty easy to get to spots, but in Mexico, that was not the case. So I was able to get to almost every spot that all my friends got to. We were there for a month and a half, so it was a lot of spots, but it would take me 30 minutes to get down a washboard road where their vans were doing it in five. And I had lived in the bus for a year and a half at that point, so I realized I don't need all this space. I have a lot of drawers and things under my bed I haven't touched in six months, so definitely not something I need to keep. And it was pretty quickly decided in Mexico, okay, well, as soon as I get back, I'm going to go and buy short bus. And then within like a week or two, I had my short bus and went out to North Carolina, drove it back to Colorado and started building. This is the right size for me now. Yeah, I wouldn't want to go smaller. I could go smaller, shorter wise. This is 25 feet bumper to bumper. And I think 23 feet, 22 feet would be absolutely perfect. But the width is why I feel like I need to stay with a short bus because vans are just naturally a lot thinner than buses. And so I think I'll always be a, a bus lifer instead of a van lifer. Right after I got back from Mexico when I realized I needed a shorter bus, I flew to North Carolina, bought this bus, drove it back to Denver. That's where a couple of my friends were at that point. When I first moved from Hawaii to the mainland, it was either Portland or Denver, and I had never spent a lot of time in Denver. So decided I'm gonna build the bus out in Denver, spend some time there. It was such a good place to do. I found an outdoor storage lot that I did the build at. They allowed me to build there. It was hard finding a storage spot to do that at. I had to read all of the fine line print of all the rental agreements because a lot of them will say, you know, you can't do any loud noises or you can't be working on a car or anything there. And some of them I think kind of just have loopholes because they didn't love that I was building there, but I always stayed very contained. So I built it out on a lot around the Denver area and it took so long. I could have gotten this done in three months, I think, the base of it. The build is never fully done. This is definitely still under construction. It just looks pretty nice now. I would have been able to build it a little quicker had it not been so freaking hot in Denver. I was thinking mountains, high altitude, nice and cool and crisp air, and that's not the case in Denver. It's so hot. So there were a lot of days that I did not do the build. I had dogs at the time, and so I would, we would just go to a park and hang out in the shade all day because it was too hot. These rigs are like little tin ovens. 
<laughs> they are so hot. They hold heat so well. This one actually, this bus had spray foam insulation already when I got it. It's a 2016, so it's fairly new. So I was pretty excited. You know, the insulation is important and people pay a lot of money or it takes a lot of effort to do spray foam in a build. But with mine, it was already in there and I was so excited. And so it does keep the heat out during the morning, but then it keeps the heat in at night. So it was really, really toasty, even in the evenings. I got it on govdeals.com, which is, I highly recommend govdeals for buying at least buses because it's a government auction website where you buy anything. I mean, they sell tools and random stuff like that too, but you buy it straight from a government entity. So you know that they're gonna have done the oil changes and things. I paid 12,500 for the vehicle and that's just the vehicle base. And I'd say I put about maybe 8,000 into it. say roughly about 20,000 total and that's with all of my appliances and my solar and my plumbing all the things that you don't think cost you know a few hundred dollars or a thousand dollars it does add up and then wood is so expensive at least it wood was really really skyrocketing when I was building this one I could see apparent differences in wood prices and quality from building my first bus to then building this and so there are some things that I did you know a little bit thinner wood on some pieces where I didn't do that on my last bus just because of the skyrocketing price of wood I'm pretty frugal with stuff. These cabinets, I got 75% off at Home Depot. They just happened. I was not even ready to install cabinets yet, but they had a sale when I went in for like one screw. And so I came out with all my cabinets and had to sit them in here for a while and move them around as I was building things, which was very annoying, but got those at an extreme discount. I'm just pretty frugal with my spending. So I could have spent a lot more and I'm sure I would have had you know, nicer quality things maybe, but I'm also pretty good at finding a good price for a good quality, so. Rewarding, definitely getting the cabinets in and the countertops on, mostly just because it upgrades your space tremendously. Once you have the countertops on, it makes it start to look like a home. These are pre-made Home Depot cabinets and putting the countertops on, getting them oiled and whatnot definitely leveled up the whole look. So I think that was the most rewarding part. But honestly, the most rewarding part is pretty much now that it's almost finished being able to sit here and live. My last bus, I never finished it. It was never fully built out. I didn't have plumbing. I didn't have adequate heat source. I still had all of the windows and it wasn't, I never insulated the walls. So it was a really simple build. It looked pretty cute sometimes from the outside, but it was a very simple build and it's extremely rewarding being in this bus and just saying like, yeah, I'm just going to take a shower in my rig, a hot shower in that fact. So that's extremely rewarding and that everything works. <laughs> that was a big problem with my last bus because it was my first one. You always learn so much from your first build to your second build. Your first build, if you're doing it yourself, it's never gonna be the build you stay in long-term. I've seen lots of my friends do builds and my friends that are far better than I am at building and a lot more technical. And you just, after you've been on the road in a vehicle for a while, you really realize this is important. This is actually a, a fun looking thing that I'm never gonna use. The advice that I would give a new van lifer, bus lifer, would be don't get stuck on a beautiful idea. Make sure that it's really gonna work for you and for how you wanna live. My best example of that, because this was one thing in my first build that I thought, I absolutely want this. It looks so good and it's useful, would be a wood burning stove. So a wood burning stove, you've, you've probably seen the really pretty builds, mostly buses, less vans with stoves, but I was looking up big buses at the time. It just looks so nice. It gives that really rustic farmhouse look, and then that's your heat source. But when you really think about it, if you're planning on traveling in very cold weather, which I was, 
you have to wake up in the middle of the night and then put more wood on the fire. And then a lot of your stuff is going to smell like smoke and all these little things. And it takes up a lot of space. So there's a ton of examples like that where don't get stuck on a beautiful idea. Make sure that it's going to be functional for you and what you're going to want to put into it. Hey, it's Alexis again. And Christian from Tiny House Expedition. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And to watch the full tour of the DIY tiny home you just learned about, click over here.